Okay, thank you. It's a really an interesting experience, and it's a very nice meet you all here in this special situation. And I would like to thank the organizer, thank IPAN for the great efforts to make this happen. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about the, the, of course, this is about the mean field gains. I would say the keyword here is uh, multiple equilibrium. So when the equilibrium is unique, we have the master equation, etc. We saw it in the morning. I mean, also also in the afternoon in Sebastian talk also. But uh, there are many situations that the, the gain has multiple equilibrium. Okay. And then, so our idea is to study the, the values, the set of all the values, say, Instead of studying the individual equilibrium, I'll, I'll consider all equilibrium together. Okay, so this is a joint work with uh, my PhD student uh, Mele Isari. He should be in the audience. And also, there's another related work uh, with Feinstein, Rudolph. So this work, we talk about set values, but for general non-zero sum gains, or the standard non-zero sum gains, but without the mean field feature, okay? And as usual in the, in the talk, I'll of course consider simple setting, simple setting in the talk. But as a result, it will be true if it's a high dimensional, if it's a common noise, Oh, by the way, this is uh, still ongoing work, okay? It's not completely done, but at least uh, as long as uh, what uh, Mele tells me, common noise should be fine. I think it should be fine. And uh, path dependence, it's okay. And uh, another thing I was really expecting it would be true is a volatility control. We, right now we consider only uh, drift control and volatility. We are not sure. So technically it's difficult, but the, the issue is I don't understand it's a technical reason or it's a fundamental a structural reason. So I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, is it okay? Can you see it clearly for the shared screen? I can. Uh... Okay. Then I'll just go with this. I have some writing here already just for this page. So it's the standard uh, setting for the mean field gains. So I think for this audience, this should be more or less standard. So let me just uh, go over very quickly, mainly for the notations. Okay. So let's consider the n player gain. So we have i from one to n, and the controls the i far will be i far one to i far n. Each player, each player, i's player, player i has a state process x i t. Of course, it should depend on the i bar hat i bar here, of course. But for notational simplicity, I'm not writing here. So it has individual noise here, the Brownian motion here, independent. Okay, depend on the control. His individual control, and of course, the main feature very clearly it depends on. I mean, it's a standard now for the mean field framework. Depends on the empirical measure. Okay, depends on the empirical measure. So xi depends on mu n, and each individual has a utility. So ji here depends on depends on his own initial state. Depends on the initial state of the group. Okay, and it depends on all the controls. Okay, so here depends on the mu n. Depends on the mu n. But the control here just depends on i for i. Yes, the other controls come to play through the mu n. Okay. And i for star is a natural equilibrium. That's in the standard sense for each player. For each player, if you use i for star, so that's the maximum maximum value. If the others use f alpha star, if the others use i for star, then you also want to use a star. You also want to use a star. Okay. So that's a very standard framework. And then now let's think of the limit case. So the mean field again. Uh, I, I find that different people set it slightly differently, okay? So here is uh, my notation. So the above notations actually it's irrelevant. I'm, I'm not really going to use these notations. But this is somewhat relevant for the rest of the talk is, uh, let's say 
So these are, say, the others, or say, the, the, the random environment. Yeah, that's a whole group, you say, the whole group here. So for mean field, again, as we all understand, the problem will be make it symmetric. So, so we have a common alpha here for all the others. We have a common control for all the others, OK? And this is the initial state of the others. So x i bar t, you start from this C here, and you have the common control here, the common Brownian motion here, and this is the law. OK, that's the law. That's our notation. And then now for the individual player, for the individual player, so given the others, all the others use the alpha, the common alpha, and the individual player allows, is allowed to use a different control, say, call it alpha prime, yes? So his initial state is x here, OK? Depends on his initial, depends on his control, of course, depends on his Brownian motion, OK? But what's important is the mu alpha. Mu alpha depends on alpha only. Not, does not depend on alpha prime. So this is a given. For the individual player, this is a given, yes? And given the mu, given the alpha, given mu, given alpha. So that's the environment. That's the, the, the group. And the individual player wants to choose alpha prime, wants to choose alpha prime to maximize his utility. Okay, to maximize over alpha prime. So here it's the same. The measure depends on the others, and the state depends on the individual. Okay, so individual state and the group measure. Individual state, the group measure, and the individual control, alpha prime. Okay, so that's the optimal value for the individual player. So choose alpha prime to maximize the utility. And we call this the J bar. So that depends on X, the individual initial value, initial state, the group's initial state, and the group's common control. OK? And the, now the mean field equilibrium. So the mean field equilibrium is that assume the, the others, assume the others are using the alpha star, assume the others are using alpha star. So for the individual player, if you also use the same alpha star, if you use also the same alpha star, that will reach the maximum. Okay, mean field equilibrium. Okay, I, I, I don't know, usually that's the point I want to say any questions, but uh, you guys are not free to ask the questions, but uh, Anyway, if you have questions, raise your hands. OK, let's move on. So now let's consider the special case that assume I fast star is unique. Or in the literature, for example, like the monotonous condition, or like the displacement the convexity alpha mentioned this morning in the first talk. If alpha star is unique, then of course the value is also unique. Yes, I will denote the V of at time zero, depend on X, depend on mu, I define it as J bar of X mu alpha star. Yes, that's very natural. OK, so there are two main questions in the literature for these kind of problems. The first one is the master equation. And I'll put it a T here. Instead of zero, we can consider the gain starting from T, yes? So that's a gain from, from small T to capital T, yes? Instead of from zero to T. The second one is, I didn't introduce this notation, but you can imagine what it is. So for the M play again, for the M play again, you get the value. Does this converge to A4? Okay, so these are two, two typical questions, okay? 
of course, I mean, I, I'm talking about uh, this, uh, the, the value V here. Yes, I mean, others, of course, you have many applications, including numerical methods, et cetera. And uh, one thing, one thing I want to mention here, one thing I want to mention here is that here we are talking about the convergence, the convergence of the value, okay? The convergence of the value. I'm not talking about the convergence of the, the equilibrium, the mean field equilibrium. The alpha n star converge to alpha star, the kind of, there, there's a large literature on that as well, yes. So here I'm mainly focusing on the, the value here, okay? Okay, so we see, we saw two talks this morning about the mass equation. I just want to mention uh, my collaborator Chen Chen Mo will also talk about the mass equation on Friday, I think. But anyway, here my question is, what if alpha star is not unique? Okay. Uh, actually, what I really mean is not alpha star is unique or not. It's a, what if the value is not unique? Okay, it's possible you have two equilibriums, two mean field equilibriums, but they generate the same value. That's also possible. Yes. Like in optimal control problem, the value is always unique, but optimal control may not be unique. I'm really talking about the value, okay? And for the gains, it's a typical situation that, that you, have, you may have different equilibriums, and even worse, different equilibriums may generate different, induce different values. So that's what I'm really talking about. So what if the alpha star is not unique? So I mean, what if the, the value is not unique? A different alpha star may generate different values. Okay, so that's the main topics I'm going to address. Let me use this for the, for the, for the title. So in this part, I will just provide some heuristic discussions. So what I'm going to claim, some, some parts are rigorously not correct, and I'll, I'll make the correct statement modification in, in part three, okay, the next part. So here, we just see the idea. So intuitively, we say, is, let's just say time zero, yes? At the time, at the time t, it's, it's the same, yes? J of, J bar of x mu i plus star. O mean field equilibrium i plus star. Okay? So I may have many, many alpha stars. I, each alpha star will generate a value. So I just put it. So this should be a subset of R, yes? That, that's what I mean, set value. So given x mu, given x mu, I'll get a set. I'll get a set, okay? A set in R, okay? Uh, but unfortunately, this is not correct. That's not the right notion. So the reason is this. I should say is common. For all players. Not for the individual player. Not for the individual player. Let me let me say individual players X. So when we say all mean field equilibrium, I first start. All mean field equilibrium alpha star. So that alpha star corresponding to the mu, this should be true. This should be true for all x. For all x, it's the same alpha star. It's the same alpha star. Okay. So actually, more rigorously, I should say alpha star is an mean field equilibrium at mu. I should say this. So given mu, I can find an equilibrium alpha star. Different mu, you may have different alpha stars. 
but you cannot say different X have a different alpha star, okay? So, so then here, it's, it's not a reasonable to say you fix X and talk about all equilibrium. It's, it's not that good, okay? Or alternatively, you can also, you can also think of it as that uh, if we think of the, the special case that when it's unique, when it's unique, when we talk about the master equations, so master equation, it's, it's a related factor, okay? It's the same reason, actually. Master equation is local for mu, but global for x. So it's not a reasonable to, to put the x here and, and, and consider this, okay? Then what should we do? So reasonably, so T of mu, okay, not a the set, okay. Uh, just by the way, just as a, just as a notation, so I put this one here just to denote the set, yes. Without these bars, then that's just as a standard functions, okay. Now, what's the set? What should the set be? So for M player, I can define the set as, this shouldn't be zero here. This is a time I can say mu n zero, I can define it as a set of the J one of X one mu n zero, I pass star the equilibrium and the J n. Each one has a each one has a yes. Each player has a value. So you put together, put it together, that's J1 to J n. So for n player, the set of value looks like it should be this. The so set of value should be a subset of Rn, okay? And is that mean field again? Mean field again, that's a, so mean field again. So that's for infinite many players, yes? But it's not I infinite because here it's for each X, each X, each X corresponding to a player. So then the, it really should be the function of X, should be the function of X, okay? So I will define this. Let me just write the zero here. Later on, we always put the, the T. As a function of X. Is that okay? So the element of the set are functions, are functions of X. But now what's this J bar? Let's come back to take a look at this J bar. J bar is here. So that's a fixed mu, fixed alpha. Once we fix the mu, fix alpha, this is a fixed. This is a fixed. This is a fixed, becomes a parameter. So this is a very standard stochastic control problem. And that's the value. If you fix mu and alpha, consider it as a function of x. This is a standard uh, control problem. So I'll, I want to add this one here. Uh, I'm sorry, when never needed, I'll put a t back, okay? So that's a t, that's x is the solution to a standard HJB equation. And that has desired regularity. Is that okay? So given mu alpha, arbitrary alpha, this you just solve a HJB equation. So it has, a, I mean, under the very mild conditions, yes? And conditions on G, conditions on F and B, okay? 
So in particular, here, this one, I want to say it will be C0 of R. Is that okay? Uh, actually, later on, technically, but uh, let's uh, forget about it. Technically, I'll, I'll put uh, some modules of continued functions here. Not only continuous, but it's uh, uniformly continuous, okay? But uh, let's uh, skip that kind of technical issues. And uh, once I define this, now that my first question will be, Time zero here. Yeah, so that's a very legitimate question. Once I define this, well, of course, I mean, there are technical issues to consider, like this, uh, this is in RN, this is in C0, but you can do the linear interpolation, that kind of things. Yes, it's, a, it's not a, a serious issue, okay? And also this set as a convergence of a set in what the sense, et cetera. But let's skip that part, okay, the technical part. So, but that's the, that's the general idea. I want to know the value converges or not, okay? Does the value converge to the, the mean field again when I consider all equilibriums? The next question is, When the value is unique, or say when the equation is unique, we talk about the mass equation, Vtx mu. When you talk about the equations, the equations are time consistent. Usually for, for control people, how do we get the equation? It's a dynamic programming plus the formula, yes? So here, my question is, do we still have the dynamic programming when the value is not unique? Or oh, by the way, I should say, when I say the value is not a unique, I mean this guy is not a unique, yes? But this set is always unique, that's by definition. By definition, it's unique. There's no uniqueness issue here, yes? So this is unique, just like the optimal control in the, in the control literature, okay? In stochastic control problems, for stochastic control problems. It's always unique. So my question is, if we view the problem for the dynamic problem, let's say V of T mu. So at time T, you start from mu. Do we have DPP? Okay, now it's a set. What does the DPP mean? The DPP means this. So DPP is from T1, T2, yes? Uh, for simplicity of notation, I will just say zero and the T. So originally, originally, so it's a, Capital T here, zero here, small t here. And I, I want to consider here. So original and uh, the V of T mu is given here. Okay, so I know this set, I know this set. And then now I consider this a problem. Originally I consider the V zero mu is a problem from zero to capital T, yes, from zero to capital T. From zero to capital T. And the DPP says, I'll consider the problem from here to here, from zero to small t, okay? So then the dynamic program will look like this. So I'll have a J bar here. I'll put a T per C and I'll explain what it means. So zero, that's the dot as a function of X. Zero is time, yes? I pass down. And what are they? We are per C. So for the standard control problem, 
H, the dynamic programming here will be the value function. Here will be the value function. So it will be a function of X here. It will be a function of X here. But now here I have the measure. I have the measure and X here. So that's the measure, that's the X, okay? So per C will play the law of this G here. Per C will play the law of this G here. Per C will be this G here. So given the measure, it's a function of X. Given measure, it's a function of X. It will be the new terminal condition, okay? So satisfies, well, it's not, a, not a, that's the original mu is given, so I'll write a new here. I have this set here, yes? I have this set here. So I pick an element, arbitrary element from the set. Pick an arbitrary element from this set. Is that okay? And then now I consider the gain from here, from zero to small t with the terminal per c. So that's, that's the t and the per c here. So I consider the gain with the terminal time t, terminal condition per c, terminal condition per c. And I start from zero, start with the x. I think I need to put the mu here also, yes? There's a mu here. I start from mu and uh, so now it's all I passed down. For the gain, for the mean field again on zero T with terminal condition. Per C. Is that okay? So if this holds true, then I say dynamic programming holds. Okay? No. Nope. If singleton, this is exactly the standard DPP. Okay, and then you have no choice of per C. You have no choice of per C. It will be just the, the, the VT, okay. Next issue I want to consider. So that's intuitively, that's intuitively the idea. So, so I, I'll, I'll consider the, this, uh, this dynamic value and to see what kind of the set of value to see, so the, the previous, the same two questions, yes? Does the convergence hold true? Does the DPP hold true? So DPP is very much related to the, related to the, the what, the, the master equation. If there's no DPP, there's no hope for the master equation, okay? Because as a PDE, you have the time consistency underlying there. And then now I want to start, discuss, uh, the important issue is the, the filtration issue. So we, we always say we have the control here, the alpha here. What information can alpha depend on? Mathematically, we say what's the filtration we are going to use? Yes, the controls. And for the, for the stochastic control problem, usually we don't care that much because the values usually they are equal, but for gains, it's really subtle. Okay, so what information does alpha depend on? What information does the alpha prime depend on? So for gains, it's really subtle and the different, uh, different information setting or say you choose different controls, the problem can be very different, okay? So there are more choices. I'll consider these three choices here. So first one is the so-called open loop control. So that's the I part depends on the, the Brownian motion, the underlying Brownian motion. The second one is the so-called closed loop control. So I part T depend on XT, or you can say it's depend on XT and the law of XT. I think this is natural. But the law of xt is deterministic, so for mean field again, it doesn't matter, depend on law of xt or not, okay? But for the n player again, it matters. It's different, yes, because the empirical measure is not deterministic. So 
So third one is, what if it's a path dependent, a still closed loop? Say so it depends on the, and then of course here, correspondingly I'll write it here. I bar t of x of zero to t and the law of x zero to t. Yeah, so it will be the law of the, so which one should we choose? Which one should we choose? Well, in principle, of course, there are there are there are there are others like the mixed strategy, or depend on both x and b, etc. Okay, so let's restrict to here. So in practice, I think the answer should be in principle. I far depend on the information you observe. So whatever information you observe, if you observe b, it depends on b. If you observe x, depends on x. Yes. So that really depends on your application. So here, I want to do it mathematically. So I'll use the abbrevi the above two criteria to say which one makes more sense. So just mathematically. Again, as I mentioned, uh, practically, we have the issue. I mean, it depends on the what information you observe. So the first one is, does the Vn converge to V on, I'm sorry, I shouldn't write it here. So the first criteria is, does Vn converge to V or not? The second criteria is does DPP holds or not? And this, it's okay. Luckily, it's okay. Luckily, it's okay. They're all fine, at least for our model. Okay. And the DPP. So, open loop control, DPP will not hold. And this is true even for very standard zero sum games. Okay. We have a contact examples. Even for zero sum games, not the mean field, just two player zero sum game, DPP fails if you use open loop controls. And this is okay. This is okay. Okay. So it seems clear. Forget about the practical issues, just the mathematically to have nice properties in this sense, say the DPP is a time consistent, they say, we would prefer closed loop controls. Okay, but there's one issue here now. Both state dependent, I call this state dependent if it depends on only on xt, and this is a path dependent. They are both are fine. Which one should we use? In practice, of course, I mean, this one is easier, at least for numerical study, for example, this one is a lot easier, yes. But this, we actually, most of the time, we actually we observe this. Okay, so should we use it or not? So this turns out to be a very interesting issue actually. State dependent or pass dependent. In stochastic control. In stochastic control, usually it's like this. So admissible control is a path dependent, but the optimal control is state dependent. Or say you can find a, a plot, you can find a state dependent optimal controls. Yes, usually, usually admissible path dependent, path dependent, path dependent admissible controls but uh, state dependent, optimal controls. Okay, since the optimal control is state dependent, so that if I restrict to the state dependent controls from the very beginning, doesn't matter because the optimal value will be the same, yes? Okay, but here for the games, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting that, so I want to, Mention one result in my the, the, the other paper I mentioned so with the Feinstein with the Rudolph. So that's for the that's for the standard game, okay, not zero sum game, not for the not for the mean field game. And again, for that again, open loop control DPP fails. And surprisingly, for that again, state dependent control DPP also fails. We have to use. Path dependent controls. We have to use path dependent controls. 
that's that's somewhat surprising to us. Okay, so obviously you see for for this game, for this game, these two will generate the different values, different set of values. They are obviously not the same. Okay, or here, here because the mean field again is symmetric. I believe that's the reason. Because the mean field again is symmetric, so somehow the, the, in the state dependent case, the DPP still holds. Or put it differently, the way we construct the count examples here, I mean, to, um, not a count example, I mean, the, the reason the DPP fails here, it's because there was some asymmetric thing here. I, I believe that's the reason. We need to investigate more closely. But anyway, here, because everything is symmetric, it still holds, okay? But uh, nevertheless, they are not equal. All right, so in the obvious sense, you know what it means. So we indeed we need to choose which one do we want to use. Okay, which one do we want to use? This one or this one? Both are okay. Using my criteria, using my criteria, both are okay. Okay, but uh, they will, they are different problems. They will generate different values. Okay. Uh, for notational simplicity. So in, in this class, for the rest, or actually it doesn't matter, I'm not going to specify. So we'll use the I bar T X T, okay? However, I want to mention that if we use If we use a path dependent controls, actually that's the long notation. The, the value, the set value, I should say, the set value will also be So we need to consider. So instead of V of T mu, actually we should consider law of X of zero T. So rigorously, if we consider, even, even if everything is state dependent, G, B, F, et cetera, they are all state dependent. If we allow for path dependent controls, path dependent equilibrium, and then this you cannot write in this way. You have to write in this way. Okay. That's why here in the talk we are just use the state dependent ones. Okay. So we can just write a mu as the the measure of the the measure of the I mean law of x t only, not as a path. Uh, let me see. Do I want to give explain? I have ten minutes. Maybe yeah. I, I was thinking, should I give a, to explain why, why they can be different? Let's escape, okay? I still have quite some material here. We have 10 minutes. So if I have time, if I move fast, I may come back to explain why they are not equal. There's a simple explanation. And it's mainly due to the non-uniqueness. You always have multiple equilibriums, multiple values. If it's unique, there's no such issue. Mainly it's because of non-uniqueness. Okay, now, so that's the heuristic uh, arguments, what uh, we are doing and uh, the, the control. So we'll use the IPAR TXT, the state dependent ones. So now the regular result. Well, the so-called regular is still not that regular in the talk. Yes, I'm simplifying a lot, skip some details anyway. Okay, again, I was cheating. So when I say these DPP, it is such as a convergence, it is such as define this one, define this value here. 
this set is bad in general. Oh, oh, I should say this. I will say this. Note the above results. I did the state of the results, yes, but uh, anyway, are indeed correct. Are indeed true in discrete models. But for continuous model, we even have the measurability issue here. So you think of this, this is a set. Or, or, or let's just think of this one first. I say all equilibriums. Well, if you have a structure, of course, on the coefficients, that's a different issue. But if when you have a general gain, this as a subset of Rn, is it measurable or not? It's not clear. Is it a Borel set? It's not clear. Okay. At least I don't see it immediately. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy. And then now, let's just think of the continuous one, the mean field one. So this is a subset of C0 R. Is it measurable? For fixed mu, we say V of T mu C0 R is measurable or not? It's not clear. When it's unique, everything is good. But when it's not unique, you don't know the structure of the all possible equilibriums. And another issue is, is the mapping. And that's in P2R, yes? I map mu to Vt mu. Is this measurable in whatever sense? It's also not clear. And then when we talk about the PDEs, like when this is unique, a singular time, not only measurable, we want the continuous data such or even smooth differentiability data such, yes? But when alpha star is unique, the problem has a good structure. So all those will be true. But when, when it's not unique, even the measurability is not clear. So if we really stick with this, it's very difficult. Wait a minute, until what time? I forget the time. How many more minutes do I have? Hello? You have about five minutes. Oh, just Seven. five minutes. Okay, okay. Then, then I'm, I was wise to skip that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, and then naturally, we consider epsilon equilibrium. Let me put it in here. So I'll say alpha epsilon is an epsilon mean field equilibrium at a mu if, now let's see what it should it be. So the standard setting should say this, J of X mu alpha epsilon, that's for the others and now that's for yourself. J bar, that's the maximum value, alpha epsilon. So for equilibrium, that's equal, yes? For equilibrium, that's equal. Now epsilon equilibrium says minus epsilon, okay? And usually we say for all x, but all x doesn't make sense, yes? I mean, for finite again, for n play again, that's for all i, that makes sense. But for this is a continuous infinite many, so you don't want to say for all x. So usually we say for mu almost surely in the support. Yes. So that, that just means this. The set of this equal to one. Yes. So epsilon equilibrium, epsilon equilibrium, we say we say each one, each one with a probability one, each one is willing to sacrifice epsilon. But this is still too much. 
each one is willing to sacrifice the epsilon. But when you have infinite many players, you want to make sure everybody is happen in practice, it's difficult. And mathematically, this is also not convenient. So I'm going to change this. Relax this a little bit. So I'll change it to greater than equal to one minus epsilon. I think that's what's happening in practice. I mean, it's difficult for a large society. It's difficult to make everybody happen. So what we are doing is the majority are within epsilon error. So the majority are happen, but uh, possibly you sacrifice a small portion of people. Okay. And uh, one comment is, since I'm running out of time, I don't want to. So we have these epsilon, we have these epsilon error here, but uh, we are talking about the measures, et cetera. So everything is continuous in terms of a measure. So it will not change too much about the law of X. Okay, with this epsilon error. Anyway, so given this, now I define the set value. So I'll say V epsilon T mu equal to the, this one, I'll also make a, so I'll do this, X, J bar T X mu I bar epsilon. So I'll get this. And uh, so for the value itself, I also allow for another epsilon. So there are three errors here. One, one epsilon, one epsilon, one epsilon here for all I bar epsilon. Okay, so that's a V epsilon. And my value is this. The real value I'm going to talk about is this. And let me put a, so it's in the intersection, okay. So this guy is, 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 is nice, is, I'm sorry. We have the existence issue, but this one, this value, this value, always exist as long as the epsilon equilibrium exists. As you know, the epsilon existence of epsilon equilibrium is a lot easier than the existence of the true equilibrium, okay? So, so this one very possibly is non-empty, okay? So, so this is a weak statement. Uh, I want to point out that, uh, say, I'll just use the notation. So for the, for the equilibriums, for the equilibrium, all, all these notation, this notation, I, I don't know if we are fine or not. So we can define the set of epsilon equilibrium and all get the set. So, and so sorry, no epsilon here. And the A bar is the intersection. So this is a set of the set of set of i phi epsilon epsilon equilibriums. Epsilon equilibriums, okay. Uh, actually, Feinstein has an interesting work on the convergence of these a epsilon versus these a bar, et cetera. But I want to point out that the value is nice. The value has some compactness, et cetera. So this one, this one, the a epsilon not empty means you exist the i phi epsilon equilibrium does not mean that the a bar this A bar actually it's the set of the true equilibrium, okay? But uh, this value is different. The value is, is, is nicer. And I think it's enough in practice. And I'm running out of time, but uh, so I'll just say, I'll just say, I'll just write this. So V bar and converge to V bar and uh, V bar satisfies DPP. Okay, that's it, thank you. And uh, here, here, of course, I need to make it more precise what does it mean, the convergence in what sense, but the main message is they converge. And the VBAR certified DPP, so that's, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>